Halloween, the bewitched holiday that haunts the modern world, conceals its origins within the shrouds of antiquity. As the moon waxes and the spectral mists swirl, we journey back to the spooky settlements and dusty trails of the Old West to uncover the secrets of a Halloween long gone. Prepare to be enchanted by the ethereal history of Halloween in the 19th century, a place where frontier meets the beyond, and the past crosses over with the present. To understand the history of Halloween on the frontier, we must first understand the history of Halloween as a whole. Halloween's mystic roots can be traced to a time when the Celtic heartlands resonated with the echoes of Samhain, an ancient festival that heralded the conclusion of the harvest season. Among the mossy hills of Ireland, the untamed expanses of the United Kingdom, and the misty plains of northern France, the ancient Celts marked the midpoint between the fall equinox and the winter solstice with a celebration like no other. During this enigmatic time of the year, the earth fires and Celtic abodes were left to smolder while the bountiful harvest was gathered. Once the harvest toils had concluded, revelers joined hands with the druidic priests, conjuring colossal bonfires and fervent prayers to appease the otherworldly beings. In the eyes of the Celts, the veil between the tangible and spiritual realms was tenuous during Samhain, beckoning both ancestors and ethereal entities to traverse it. In an attempt to ward off the wily fairies and their siren call, the Celts clothed themselves in the likeness of animals and monsters. The whisper of history suggests that this celebration allowed them to walk with both the living and the dead, a communion beyond the mortal coil. Samhain was a time of enigma, a twilight hour when the mundane and supernatural intertwined. The ghosts of Halloween's origins wandered the Celtic wilderness, oblivious to the future transformations that awaited them. In the early years of the 7th century, the Catholic Church, with the flourish of holy incantations, set its sights on November 1st, christening it as All Saints Day, a day dedicated to venerating the celestial pantheon of saints. As the centuries danced by, the grip of Christianity extended its ethereal fingers into the heart of Celtic domains, infiltrating and fusing with ancient practices. By the year 1000 AD, the Church's conjurings created another spectral day, November 2nd, designated as All Souls Day, an occasion to pay homage to the departed spirits. Many believe that these ecclesiastical moves were calculated efforts to exercise the Celtic festival of the dead and substitute it with a church-sanctioned alternative. From the enigmatic depths of history emerged a triad of holidays. All Saints Day, All Souls Day, and the Venerable Samhain. These entwined their destinies, and over the eons, metamorphosed into the Halloween we know today. The Catholic Church still bestows its blessings on All Saints Day and All Souls Day, while some modern-day Wiccans and Celtic Reconstructionists continue to revere Samhain. Venturing across the moors of England and the Emerald Isles of Ireland during the observance of All Saints Day and All Souls Day, the denizens of the spirit realm crossed thresholds and whispered their secrets into the ears of the living. Poor souls clad in rags knocked on the doors of wealthier households, bearing promises of prayer for the departed souls of their homeowner's kin. In exchange for their solemn vows, they were showered with soul cakes, pastries as sweet as a bewitched tryst. This tradition, known as souling, was eventually adopted by the youth of these lands, who transformed it into a whimsical game of door-to-door -door pleasantry. Children traversed the cobblestone streets, beseeching for more than just prayers. In place of soul cakes, they yearned for treasures in the form of edibles, coinage, and ale, foreshadowing the tradition we now call trick-or-treating. The enchantment of Halloween was beginning to take root. Like a whisper in the midnight breeze, the practice of carving eerie faces into vegetables crept into the Halloween tapestry. Ireland and Scotland became the crucible in which this dark art was forged, sometime around the 1800s. The legend, woven into the fabric of Halloween, 
recounted the tale of Stingy Jack, a man who cunningly deceived the devil himself, sealing his fate to wander the earth with only a flickering coal ensconced in a turnip to light his cursed path. People, seduced by the allure of Stingy Jack's infernal dance, began to fashion their own versions of his lanterns. Carving grotesque faces into turnips or potatoes, they placed these spectral sentinels near their doors and windows, casting a fearsome light to ward off not only Stingy Jack, but also the wandering phantoms that roamed in the twilight. In the arid expanse of early America, where the Protestant faith loomed large, Halloween celebrations were as scarce as water in the desert. But the winds of change carried whispers of Halloween's enchantment, and in the mid-19th century, a tidal wave of immigrants, particularly the Irish, arrived on America's shores, their pockets heavy with the traditions of Samhain and All Hallows' Eve. These newcomers breathed life into the spectral festival, celebrating as they had in their homelands. However, they brought with them not only customs, but also pranks that added a pinch of mischief to the holiday. By the late 1800s, Halloween had evolved to encompass tricks as well as treats. The era was one of youthful merriment, with harmless pranks involving farmer's wagons appearing on barn roofs, vegetables uprooted from gardens, and outhouses unceremoniously toppled. It was a time of innocent revelry when laughter echoed in the crisp autumn night. But as the sands of time continued to shift, the mischievous spirit of Halloween grew bolder, evolving from playful antics to reckless vandalism. The advent of the 20th century ushered in a new era, one marked by violence, vandalism, and sporadic acts of aggression. Trick-or-treating became a fraught affair, as the line between good-natured fun and malicious pranks blurred, casting an eerie shadow over Halloween. As the wheels of the Louisville Short Line train chugged through the eerie night of October 31st, 1879, the hapless engineer encountered a nightmarish sight. A lifeless form sprawled across the tracks. With a heart pounding like a ghostly drumbeat, the engineer pulled the brakes with all of his might, and the train screeched to a spine-tingling halt. He leaped from the locomotive, braving the dark, and soon realized the fiendish truth. The lifeless body was but a stuffed figure, a macabre joke played by 200 mischievous boys concealed in the shadows, howling with fiendish laughter. While the engineer chose to forego admonishments, recognizing the spirits of his own youthful pranks, Halloween during the Gilded Age was not a carnival of candy and laughter, but a cauldron of pranks vandalism, and even more violence. Immigrants from Scotland and Ireland had transplanted their Halloween traditions to American soil, and their celebration was devoid of costumed children traversing the neighborhood for sweets. Instead, it was marked by acts of cunning and tricks as dark as the night itself. In the rolling hills of Ireland, and now the rolling hills of America, boys carved eerie faces into pumpkins to frighten unsuspecting travelers while Scottish lads played a malevolent prank, filling the air with noxious fumes by thrusting smoking cabbages through keyholes. The American countryside witnessed the rise of bizarre pranks too, from livestock on barn roofs to gates torn from their hinges in a game known as Gate Night. The wheels of progress spun their web, offering new avenues for mischief as manhole covers vanished, tires were deflated, and fake detour signs led hapless motorists astray. The pranks, once harmless and limited to rural landscapes, encroached upon city streets through the west, manifesting a darker side of Halloween. The lawlessness iconic to the frontier expanded into larger settlements, becoming a symphony of shattered glass and broken hearts echoed through urban landscapes. The very spirit of Halloween had become a spectral phantom, wrecking havoc upon an unprepared world. The ancient charm of pranks evolved into something more insidious, with fire setting, property damage, and the terrorizing of innocent pedestrians becoming the order of the night. 
youthful exuberance transformed into organized acts of aggression. And as Halloween's perilous dance quickened, some Americans chose to protect themselves with fatal consequences. A wire stretched across a Tucson, Arizona sidewalk in 1907 led to the demise of one youthful prankster, while a mother in Logansport, Indiana, found herself face to face with a grinning pumpkin lantern and paid the ultimate price. Halloween was no longer just a time for mirth. It had become a test of survival. As the final strains of the 19th century whispered through the air, Halloween began to take on a new form. The once hidden tradition stepped out of the shadows and into the spotlight. Cities and societies across the land began to embrace the bewitched holiday, and celebrations took on a grandeur that befit the era. In the early 1870s, a flicker of change ignited the Halloween celebration. Cities and groups across the nation offered a tapestry of festivities, ranging from grand suppers to enchanting concerts and bewitching balls. In Fall River, Massachusetts, a celebration in 1875 organized by the Scottish Caledonian Society brought together all these elements in an extravagant evening of revelry. Halloween was no longer confined to rural homes. It had infiltrated the urban landscapes promising lavish parties and unforgettable moments. In the southern regions of America, a curious custom emerged, as Southerners delved into a game known as Snapdragon during Halloween, despite its roots in English Christmas tradition. Perhaps the allure of darkness and the fiery dance of brandy enticed them. With the approach of the late 1800s, Halloween found a new canvas, home parties. Magazines spilled secrets, offering recipes and decoration ideas to eager housewives. Creative invitations graced mailboxes, celebrating the art of crafting and signaling the arrival of an era where Halloween had become more than mere trickery. American newspapers chronicled the rise of Halloween celebrations, painting a vivid picture of a holiday that was spreading its roots across the nation. Fortune telling, love tests, and a mischievous games held sway as Americans joined hands in merriment. The old love tests of Halloween remained, even if belief in omens and ghosts had waned. It was a night of divination, an exploration of the supernatural, as the past merged with the present in a joyful symphony of mirth and mysticism. Yet, the Halloween we now cherish has evolved through a cacophony of traditions. The iconic pumpkin, now synonymous with Halloween, was first mentioned in the 1860s in children's magazines. Jack-o'-lanterns found their place, their flickering grins illuminating our modern celebrations. Costume-clad revelers and the age-old tradition of trick-or-treating did not become the norm until the 1830s, changing the very essence of Halloween from divination to revelry. Halloween, once a night of mystical divination, now stands as a holiday that blurs the lines between the living and the departed, where young and old share in the enchantment, and where the past and present converge in a phantasmagoric celebration. In the modern era, Halloween may seem to have lost some of its eerie mystique, but its essence continues to enchant and bewitch, serving as a timeless reminder of a history steeped in tradition, transformation, and the enduring allure of the supernatural. As the holiday approaches, we can reflect on its origins and embrace the spirits of those who celebrated Halloween in the Old West, inviting them to join us in the timeless dance, darkness, and delight.